Yep. Welcome back to the Pilots 101 podcast with me, well, your co host, Lisa Timmons, and my co host, Chris <laughs> Quintos. Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's been, a, it's been a little while for us. It's you guys been a little wouldn't while. know because we keep a constant stream of content going because we can't ever have you see us sleep. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah, we're just, we're over, we're both overachievers in that way. Um, but <laughs> it's true. Yes. <laughs> but hello. Ha, I oh, have hey. had one of those day- Welcome to Pilots 101 podcast. Hello. My name is Christian because <laughs> I am a mess today. <laughs> you are a delightful, <laughs> beautiful, wonderful mess. My favorite kind of mess. <laughs> I'm like, where do I even start? Like, okay, like, here's where it starts. Um, I, I, I love what we do <laughs> like as creatives. Um, yes. And I love even the project to project basis thing, except when you're like in a project and then it's done. It like, like it's good to set a tempo for your life, right? Like I work out, I eat oatmeal. Set a tempo for your life. <laughs> that is, that is, that, you've just verbalized something. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> Yes, you want to set a rhythm. Yes, right. But then you do these projects. Like the other day, I um, shot something with our friend Alfred, and that was like two night shoots in a row. Two, not okay. night, like, but just like went to like two a.m. or whatever, like eight p.m. to two a.m. Ooh, I got out of that life. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and so now I'm just like, so then I took naps. So then anyway, so I'm sleepless. And then yesterday, I decided to just pick at my face. Because like oh I so that's that's what's happening there. I'm a recovered face picker. I mean, not aggressive, not super bad. I think I just I'm just a picker in general because it's cute. My cuticles, yes, yeah, my cuticles, and then like the face. Oh man, that is a slippery slope because I've I've been there, my friend. Yes, and it's like it's stress, and then the mask, and then just like all of it is so bad, and so then like and then I'll compulsively whatever. And then, like, I was late. So then I've been on this weird sleep schedule, and now I'm picking up my face. And now I'm um, – this morning it was like – it was like I forgot my laptop to record this thing. And I'm just, oh, like, running heart, home honey. to go get it and coming back. And it's just, like, I try to tell myself, I'm like, okay, this is just going to be a 10-minute late day. Like, that's just what we're going to call it. We're, you're 10 that minutes 100%. late. 100%. You know what you're you're doing? You're reclaiming your time. <laughs> 10 minutes I'm just like, at a time. Right. I'm just like, uh. So anyway, I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm like, what's happening? Yeah. I'm <laughs> all over the map. Oh, uh, you I'm know what? I feel like you've just verbalized how probably a lot of people feel right now. Uh, a lot of parents, like, I'm sorry, parents, because I feel like this is like, this is the part of this is the the phase of pandemic that probably is the scariest for you guys. Yeah, it's just like everybody's getting sick and like everyone's going back to school. But it yeah, and it just keeps throwing off the rhythm because there's like quarantine yes. things and yeah, aside from like late night shoots, but it just uh, the tempo, the tempo is needs to be built again. But I digress. It absolutely it absolutely <laughs> does need to be built again. But this project that you were talking about, yes. uh, is this the one where you had posted some <laughs> really sexy images of yourself <laughs> saying, I'm playing a, it's, I'm glad I'm back to playing a basic bitch. At yes, a that's right. A- <laughs> My character was called ABG number two, Asian baby girl number two. <laughs> <laughs> And I did. Num- <laughs> Who was number one? <laughs> um, another lovely ABG. <laughs> I love it. You talk with ABG. Yeah, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I got to like be in a club, um, this big club. Yeah, I just got like I had like two lines, so it wasn't like I worked a lot on the project or whatever. But um, but I got to hang out with a bunch of people and got to shoot a scene in a club, which was ridiculous because. I haven't. Where was this? Where where was the shoot? <laughs> Arena at K Town, <laughs> like, like the. At first, I thought you said Reno. Oh no no like, no! The big the big K Town club. I've I've like never been, and it was it was it was as clubby as you might imagine. You know, 
I, you know, K-Town is amazing. I, I mm-hmm. love K-Town mm-hmm. so much. I used to, uh, my friend Ben Mandelker from the Watch What Crappens podcast, <laughs> for anybody in the know. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, mm-hmm. he, my friend, uh, I, I believe her her online persona is Slinks. I think I'm getting it right. These are very old school references. So the two of them used to organize um, pub crawls for our friend group. Oh, fun. Like, once every six months, and it would alternate from downtown LA, yeah. a, a course through downtown LA. Oh my and God, then fun. We would swap to a course through K Town. And <laughs> the K Town one was always my favorite because uh, the food. The food was so amazing. And like the, the club you mentioned, I don't know if I've been there, but I have this rem- I have this memory. I think it's like in 2013 yeah. of. Uh, they added a stop that I guess Anthony Bourdain had gone to oh, that he had recommended because sure. he's really you know great with those hole in the wall oh, yeah, recommendations. Yeah, yeah. Rest in and peace. We, bye, bye. Oh yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and I we went to this club. I was I felt it was amazing. <laughs> I felt like I was in Korea. Yeah, I was yeah. like I am. Um, I it was just like this is so uh, surreal to feel like i'm you know you go into a strip mall in la yes. and you open a door and you can feel like you are in a portal being transported somewhere yeah you and are that is, it's gangnam style like you're just there <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I thought you looked great and I wanted to tell you so. Thank you for I th- appreciate you saying that. I could really use that um that booster. Um yeah, but you're right. It's like opening a door to another portal, much as 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 like, you know, sort of like a weird paranormal X file thing. <laughs> Oh, girl, I, I saw what you were doing and I was like, yes, she's going to stick this landing. And you did. That was a that was a fabulous segue. Oh, my God. I'm so tired. I'm like, look, just look at my eyeballs. X-Files. Can we talk X-Files. about it? I'm, can we just talk? I I mean, from when I think that, that this was the show that brought you so many iconic pop culture 90s references. Yes. The truth is out there. The truth is out there. The truth is yes. out there. When someone says the truth is out there, we all know it's X Files. Yeah, absolutely. It's X Files. And I was thinking, you know how it had that little like um like uh typing thing in the beginning, like these are actual yes. blah blah blah. It was like, is that the, f- the case files? Right. Is that the first time that that was ever used? Like I don't know if that is or isn't, but it was like a very early time to be like it, these are based it was, on, you know. The only other time I feel like I would have seen that would have been Law and right, Order. Right, Law and Order. So maybe right. Law and Order did something like that. But no, you're absolutely right. It's so it's the first time. Like, like I take for granted yes. that this is baked into the culture for everyone who's bo- being born now. Right. And then for us, like we remember before X, I really feel like it's before X Files and after X Files. <laughs> yeah, I just remember staying like staying up late. Um, to what this was on Friday nights. Um, I feel like it was like at ten o'clock or nine ten o'clock, and then like afterwards was like tales of the crypt i mean it was on like, oh. yeah it was what a spooky way to watch it well i'll tell you how i watched x files yes so please. i was a kid on an army base in germany oh. so we got one program we didn't have cable back right. then because this was uh this is the the early 90s correct so i can't remember when it came on live but my grandma twyla yes was my original netflix She knew that my sisters and I, we were obsessed with X-Files and Seinfeld. And she would record every episode on a VHS tape. Oh, my gosh. And she would pause it for the commercials, (laughs) press record again. And she would just just basically send us a giant box of VHS tapes. And that was our first experience of binge watching is we would just watch all the X-Files. That's cool. She was TiVo. TiVo Twyla. She was my TiVo. Twyla TiVo. <laughs> Twyla TiVo. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's lovely. Yeah, it, 93 is when the show ran. Oh, yes, I was 13. How old are you? You, you were a little baby. Eight, 10. Yeah, 10. Ooh. I fully would have babysat you. <laughs> you would have been so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yes, I totally remember. It just was, it takes me right back to that era of just like, yeah, because you know what it was? It was it was TG. So I was 10. So that's the time where it's like I was still watching TGIF, 
Yes, yes. And then, well, did you get TGIF on base? No, no. Again, my um, we would get like programming For, sort of through Twilight. Through a- through Twilight, she was the one who would like really get like we would just binge on all of her tapes. Oh my gosh. I mean, we would watch the stuff, but yeah, it was one channel. So yes, I've heard of this. It, it, yeah, it's it's very odd. They choose so, what but we you... did get, but we did get X Files. Oh, good, yeah. But so yeah, it was we got it Friday nights. TGIF. It was just like uh, I can't. Mean, TGIF was like a long running. <laughs> Wasn't it step by step? There was step by step. Family. I mean, Family Matters. Yeah, matters. Um, hanging with yeah. Mr. Cooper was oh on there. Oh my gosh, Her- hanging with Mr. Cooper. Boy Meets World did a stint. Um, dinosaurs. <laughs> what a okay. Dinosaurs is great. By the way, that's going on the list. <laughs> Please put that on the list. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely going on the list. But X Files. Yeah, X Files for me was such a because I was thirteen. Yeah. So this was like definitely the perfect I yeah. feel like this is such a good age for me to experience this show for sure this definitely is uh I've said definitely so many times today um it's all good this was probably my first foray into uh like not horror because I you, wasn't a kid who was into horror but like weird yeah like I yeah, yeah, love yeah. the weirdness of it um I loved their dynamic yeah. she she's such an amazing uh performer and baby and, and such a on oh this. my gosh she's <laughs> tiny also she's so petite I keep she's, forgetting yeah. how petite she is until they have her in these giant I mean, the shoulder pads. Yeah. At one point, she's dressed like Guy Masterson <laughs> from Guys and Dolls. And yes, long, to- like, totally. Her, her jacket's way too long. Totally. It, like, hits her in the mid-thigh, and she just looks like a little girl in, um, you know, dad's suit. Yes. Which is very much the whole, um, the vibe of, like, uh, kind of reminds me of the Jodie Foster character, you know, in Silence of the oh, Lambs. Oh, yeah. Like the tiny, remember we, we loved us a tiny little FBI agent lady <laughs> who was just, you and, know, in over her head. I mean, I, I don't. really smart. She, yeah, and she was, like, this was, like, her first gig. Like, I mean, she had, like, one tiny thing before this, and then she just came out. And I was, like, oh, yeah. she looks so young. Um, so tiny. And I think she's, she like, five feet tall. She's probably, like, my... <laughs> Right. She must be, because yeah, because right. actors are all pretty, pretty petite. Oh no, five uh, three, five three. Oh, Ooh, taller oh, than my me. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> she, wow, that means oh man, because I feel like she looks even smaller. She's so I'm like just she, a <laughs> tiny, yeah. Um. So yeah, she and and you know what's funny is like she was such a big deal. I mean, massive. Both of them. Both were. of them People were. were both of them were. This was. I mean, forget Pam and Jim. No. No, we, no, no, no. It was... we stand these fools, Scully and Mulder, all the way mm-hmm. through. Scully and Mulder. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, this pairing of, I there's a I did I, I feel like I like took a note or something like at the begin they, when they very first meet. Yeah, he they both give you their thesis statements of who they are as characters. <laughs> well, it's in their names. She's like it's it, oh my gosh, you're absolutely like, right. Like I don't know, That's Scully. So it's like I think Scully is just like she's supposed to be analytical. <laughs> And Mulder sounds a lot like Smolder to me. I don't know. Maybe I made it that up. It sounds like Smolder. Like he's Fox? A fl- Mulder. Fox. Mulder. Ugh, the only other name that I thought was a, a first first name of a character that's like kind of this goofy reveal is Cosmo Kramer. Oh, Cosmo. Cosmo Kramer and Fox Mulder. Like, where were we getting these names? This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry. You were saying when they first meet, they tell you exactly – who they are. Yeah. They tell you exactly who they are. And it's so fun because you know exactly how these, this odd couple is going to process every case yeah. that they do. She says clearly, um, science. Yes. This, don't you, you know, we need to, pr- this, this is, has not been proven. Right. And he says to her, don't you wonder about the fantastic mm. that's outside of the realm of proof of science. And so, you know, that like both of them, it's just going to be every case, you know, she's going to come at it right. like science, science, science. Right. He's going to be like, there's this extra um, X factor. Yeah. Well, it's it, we. Op- I feel like it opens on like his I want to believe poster. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> or something like that. Like we go into his office in the like basement. 
And <laughs> Which, it, by the way, after Wellington Paranormal, it was so perfect to segue into this because I was like, oh, this is what um, uh, Sergeant Maka thinks his. Oh, totally. His this is what he thinks his. Is like. Is, yeah, the to- <laughs> totally. It's so. And then I forgot, like, I mean, I just. I'm like, where? Okay, so the, basically they, they opened the first case that that X Files uses is um just like a, an alien abduction your your standard alien abduction in the standard woods standard alien abduction somewhere in the midwest mm-hmm. i think in the pacific northwest oh no sorry I the think. pacific northwest that's right cuz that's where the, the i feel like that's where the aliens are just constantly mm-hmm. if we learned anything from resident alien <laughs> <laughs> it's that they like the pacific northwest no it's true <laughs> it's true i read this book i want to say it was called Nope, I can't remember. But it took place somewhere in like, uh, nope, I can't, still can't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm making, you know what? Mm, I am making all of this up. Uh, I feel- sorry. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I think it was like in Utah. Skin- oh, sk- Skinwalker Ranch. It sounded obscene when I was saying it in my head. It's called Skinwalker Ranch. Yes, Skinwalker Ranch is this place. I'm I looking this up. in like Utah and it's like had this like its fair share of – of fair and paranormal stuff. Um, oh, I've never heard of yeah, this. Yeah, so there's this book that I read, and I and the only reason that I read it, I, I don't remember. I'll have to look it up, but is because it was like referred to and um, like Harry Reid had read it, and he was like talking about it, uh, like when they started like releasing like stuff. Um, government oh, from Area Fifty One. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Just with like, declassifying things. Yes, I will find the title of the book, but like declassifying things. And he, it was. I think I want to say it was like, yeah, it, it was a nonfiction book, but it was just about how like this area has like an unprecedented amount of like you know UFO activity. Yes, activity, and also that it's got like its share of native lore in oh. this area. Oh, what a cool co- – well, you know, that's so – that's such a lovely confluence of two elements that you see in the X-Files cases because those of us who've like – you see the the pilot is perfect because the the perfect X-File case, the, especially knowing where the story goes of Scully and Mulder throughout this whole thing – Yeah, the over – yeah. Is alien abduction because they don't just cover alien abduction, but alien abduction – is the thread yeah. for the entire series. The whole thing. Because, the whole shebang. Yes, because, yeah. because you have the you have the with X Files, what you get is the this wonderful case of the week situation. Right. Because right. I mean, the case of the week that like scared the shit out of me and my sisters <laughs> was the guy yes. who could crawl through spaces and get to you he could like smush his bones and like he could go uh, through the walls and then he no would thanks. take out your liver he would eat your liver no thanks <laughs> yeah no i it was so scary and so that's the thing i love about so with x files you got to explore they would go into this supernatural sort yeah. of realm yeah. they would go into these sort of grounded mysteries but the mystery, the big mystery that uh, is so juicy and so fun throughout the whole series is alien abduction, Mulder's sister, and his, you know, his connection yes. to that, and then eventually Scully's mysterious abduction. All of a sudden, she's got metal in her. Right, guys. Spoiler alert: <laughs> If you haven't seen the <laughs> series, it's you Give know, it a watch. it's. it's Give it a watch. Give it a watch. So it's, yeah, it's, I I just, I love, I, this has such a special place in my heart, the show. Because yeah. I mean, you know, we were a certain age and, and I mean. They were the first, they were, well, like you were saying, it was kind of the first, because it's not horror, right? It's like a, it's spooky. No, it's, but it's, it's not spooky. And they were sort of the first to do this, like the way they did it. Um, exactly. Because it wasn't like your, um, like campy like sci-fi you know what I mean it wasn't like because uh, obviously no, there was like Star, Star Trek but that's like completely different vibe from like yeah it's almost like yeah you're absolutely right because Star Trek is just like it's 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 clear straight sci-fi yeah but it's interesting I was thinking how um David Duchovny was in Twin Peaks also Twin as Be- a government yes. agent yes Yes. <laughs> you know, playing it. So it, it has, um, and I think that was before X Files. I, if I'm, I yeah, think that so must too. Been. Yeah, because that was. I think so, because I think, yeah, I think, yeah, he was. X Files was his big breakout. Yeah, he was the one who had, who already had a name kind of because of Twin Peaks. 
And Gillian yes. Anderson was like brand spanking new. Well, and see, Twin Peaks what had that those weird mm-hmm. totally sort of elements, totally. but like you said, it feels it was more in the camp arena. Yeah, or, and, you know, and it, also, it definitely wasn't the same. It wasn't as big, of, I don't think. Okay, I found the book. No, Hunt for the Pulse. Skinwalker. Science confronts the unexplained at a remote ranch in Utah. That's the title. <laughs> Hunt for the Skinwalker. Oh my gosh. I'm just saying. Give it a read. Skinwalker. It was a good read. What does Skinwalker mean? T- take a that look. sounds terrifying. It is terrifying. Oh <laughs> I love Am this I stuff. Am I a Skinwalker? Because I walk around in skin. Right. I love this stuff. <laughs> Just take a look. So wait, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is like the whole the um, crux of their like the it's like science versus like intuition. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's totally the whole sh- series to me. Where it's and I feel like, like usually, maybe prior to that, it feels like the woman was always the yes, one portrayed as being the intuitive one. This was huge. And then she's the scientific, rational. Right. Which, honestly, I feel like that's more true to real life. Like, I feel like women <laughs> are so much more pragmatic. I feel like men are so much more emotionally driven. Yeah. I don't know. I'm making some really <laughs> sweeping generalized statements, but but it's I, – I, I don't know. I feel like uh, that's that's some, that's a dynamic I'm more familiar with than the other way around. I, I'm, I'm here with you too, sister. But I'm also like right. very led by the moon and my emotions. Um. <laughs> oh, yes. You're- I think I've led by my um, my snack uh, d- drive. <laughs> <laughs> just, just my, my snack drive. Um, but I do want to – I think one thing that I I was like uh, – you know, I was just so in awe of like just watching Jillian Anderson this whole time. And then like – Amazing. Yes. So it's like, you know, this was her big- – but you know, we just gotta have her in her underwear. We gotta have her in her underwear. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like, and I'm like, why? I mean, by the way, her underwear looks like it was made. If you guys can't see, I'm wearing a, like a heather gray giant oversized t-shirt. That's the vibe that her panties gave <laughs> because she had those big ass, high waisted, yes. briefed panties. And, Girl looks good, um, but it was just like. I know it was the it was the obligatory. We need Scully to be in her panties at least like, once. Get that during girl. this pilot. Get, she's a skinwalker. <laughs> we want it. You know what I mean? Like we're just like she is a skinwalker. <laughs> like, we want it. And then of course, like the dramatic, like like because then she finds like to the 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 tell of these people who've been abducted is this like physical um, like prong marks almost. They look like just two bumps. That they look like two bumps, and she at one point thinks she has yes. them, and she's like freaking out. So she goes to Mulder yes. in her panties and just like in she's his like, chest. You, yeah, can you look at these? And it's so not Scully. It's, it's so but, not. You know, they're like, listen, we need to. If the audience can't catch this sexual tension, we're just gonna like beat him <laughs> over the head with it. And she's like, are these it? And she lifts it up. And by the way, it fully looks exactly like, I know why she's concerned and why he (laughs) is so quick to be like, ha ha, those are bug bites. That was the one moment where I was like, for somebody who's like, always like coming back with the spookiest answer, you're the one who's like, "Mm, womp womp, bug bites. Yes, exactly. I know, right? (laughs) It just yeah. They look like buttons. I was like, I don't know. I feel like maybe she did get bit. <laughs> I just feel like it was a um, yeah. They were just like in the room. My guess is just like we need um, we need approximately thirty seconds of Jillian Anderson in her underwear, like, and it has to be real sensible. Yeah, Heather Gray. Co- <laughs> I mean, the bag. I, I was the bagginess of the panties. <laughs> Because this was also, guys, this is before J-Lo had hit the scene and they were like, it's totally fine if if you're wearing underwear where you've got extra space in the back. Like, what this even is, is that? before J-Lo was on the scene. It really was before it's she like, was it's okay to dancing. be able. Yeah, somewhere you know what it was? down the street. It, yeah, it's on the lot. down the street. She was about to be like, just so you know, guys, pretty soon it's going to be fashionable for you to fill out your own underwear. <laughs> like, you don't have to like, it's almost like. The grunge era was still like everything's so baggy, including our panties. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. I just I totally remember that style of underwear too. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I kind of want to like 
if I, I mean, I, it's not possible. I have a lot of junk in the trunk, but I just <laughs> feel like I want to go back. Do it. Just do whatever you want. Time travel through your um, undergarments. Skin walk your way to bed. Um, <laughs> Skin walk your way. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, just- man. I did. There, there's this moment that, like, I don't know why I got so tickled by it, but when the coroner is, like, so mad <laughs> that they're exhuming bodies. Oh, yes. And he's like, yeah. and he just, like, Ah, he drives up and he parks his car. He's like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? I was like, this is wild. Like, I just, I don't know why, because this is not a hugely important part of no. this uh, episode, but like, there is something about how mad he was at the FBI. Yeah. Like, just imagining a small town coroner having such a chip on his shoulder that the FBI is around. Like, right. I just, I want to know that guy's life. What, where's the spinoff <laughs> on him? We want the coroner files. Angry local coroner who's like, all these high school kids keep dying. And he's like, I don't know what to tell you. Stop checking my work. Yeah. Ah." (laughs) It's like, lo and behold, an alien body pops out. Well, okay. Uh, When the freaking casket just like tumbles down the hill. Yes. (laughs) I was like, ah. (laughs) My My favorite scene from this where it was like, just like, just like, look at how much money we have is the, the like scene that happens on the plane <laughs> where they're like, look, oh we're make my a plane, gosh, a plane scene happen. It's like, we totally didn't need that. But he, he totally didn't need that scene. They, but they were like, listen, this is an airplane. We're on it. We have a lot of production money. And then like, then like Mulder's taking a nap and he goes and the whole plane like shakes or whatever, because they've like entered, you know, this like creepy territory, very creepy zone. And then he looks up and he's like, Guess we're here. <laughs> it's just something like that. Like, how is he so calm? That drives me crazy. I need you to be scared yeah. when I'm scared. But yeah, that, <laughs> that scene is very much like, look at our budget. Oh, yeah. We're filming oh, on yeah. a plane, you know? And then, the, yeah, that's the, only, that's the only big set piece that they do. Yeah, totally. Well, that and the tumbling of the- Of the casket. <laughs> casket with the alien body in it. Yes. Like, I forgot that in the pilot, you're like, there are aliens. Like, you know by the pilot of this show yeah. that there are definitely aliens, for sure. Yes. We saw a body. Somebody took it away. And we never mention him. Yeah. But the smoking man. The smoking the man. The introduction of the smoking man. Like I forgot about is- the smoking man until he came. I was like, oh, how could I forget this crucial part of the series? Oh, such a crucial part of it. Such a crucial um, part of the X Files, um, like legend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mythology. (laughs) Yes, I mean, I remember. I remember people being, you know, after seeing the latest episode, people at work talking, people at school being like, "Hey, what do you think that means?" Oh my gosh, wasn't that so crazy in that episode where this happened? I mean, guys, before Reddit, we had to just, like, figure it out (laughs) among ourselves. (laughs) Like, fan theories were an oral tradition. Yes. Yeah, (laughs) totally. Yeah, it was, like, literal water cooler talk, you know? It was literal water cooler talk. Or, like, uh, you had to wait till like, your TV guide came out or, like, they talked about it in Oh, my gosh, TV guide. Something like that. I'm about to age myself like crazy. I remember before, um, you know – you have the only kind of movie reviews because I wasn't on the internet no. really. Uh, was the newspaper? Yes, I would read the newspaper for movie reviews mm-hmm. or summaries, and then you know from there you decide what movies uh, to oh, go uh, to. From there, hold on. From there, you call a um, movie phone. <laughs> Welcome. Why don't you to- just tell me the name of the movie you want? <laughs> Welcome to Movie Phone. Yeah. Movie Phone. Oh my gosh! You know, I never used Movie Phone. Where you weren't in America at the time. I was in America, but I saw that Seinfeld episode where Kramer <laughs> kept getting calls because people thought he was Movie Phone, and he felt obligated to help yes. them. And I fully related because I, Thank you. I feel like that's a that's a Lisa activity. Yeah. Is if someone accidentally thinks I'm Movie Phone, I'm going to help them find I'm their movie. Yes, ending their Movie Phone call. Thank you, Twyla, for keeping. <laughs> Um, <laughs> thank you, Tyler, for giving Miss Lisa, young Lisa, in the know. Like, ah, she was the best. Do you know what else she used to do? Pl- oh, this woman was an angel. <laughs> she would 
cut out I loved Calvin and Hobbes. Oh, so oh my god. This, every this, Sunday I mean, is... she'd cut out the Sunday ones and she would put it on paper and she made me the like books oh, because I was obsessed my. with the books so she would make me the books from the comics before the books came out. I love her. She is yeah. so sweet. Uh, and you just wrapped me in a blanket of nostalgia with those Calvin and Hobbes books. Right. I re- oh my gosh. I just l- tore through those. And then I remember like when my um, now husband and I moved in together and like his mom was like unloading all of his shit on him. <laughs> it was like, I mean, like it was just like, here's all the stuff I've saved. And it was like, he had all of his Calvin and Hobbes books. And I was like, that's ah! so cute. Like, it was just, I was like, me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, those were my, um, the two things that my parents gave me and my sisters to motivate us to get good grades was, um, Ice cream. Yes. At Baskin Robbins. BR. And Calvin and Hobbes books. <laughs> Those were my two things. Like we didn't get allowance or anything. Those were the the two bribes. Yes. For for good grades. Right. <laughs> yes. Those are great bribes. I mean, again, and my remind you, like there was no cold stone. No. There was, like there was maybe a random like yogurt, like its own frozen oh, wow. yogurt thing. But it yeah, wasn't. There right. wasn't like Menchies or like whatever we have. Fro, you know, like we have so many. There was no fro yo yo. Not like that. Not like not like it is now. I mean, Seinfeld made fro yo, right? Or oh, is that <laughs> like, when? It was around that time. Yeah, um, that's so funny. Yeah, because all th- that's right. Yeah, speaking. Of, yeah, Seinfeld would have been at the same time. Oh yeah. So as we've been talking before with with uh, some of these other '90s sitcoms, yeah, talking about how it was the height. Um, of like sort of the golden era yeah, of like totally. sitcoms on the air and then this i feel like kind of kicked off like like thinking about lost yeah thinking yes. about shows where it's like these big mysteries totally where totally. you've got audiences um yeah, like I said, it is pre-Reddit where people yeah. really were like <laughs> trying to figure out and then would get so excited discussing like what it could possibly mean yes. and i just i feel like I'm so curious to know what it must have felt like in the writer's room, that kind of pressure to try to deliver answers on these mysteries because I actually kind of fell off X-Files over the years. Same, yeah. And I feel like a lot of people did like, I I, I wonder- We started to take it for granted. You know what I mean? We did. Because it ran forever. So it ran forever. And also, did you see the movie or the, like, I'm curious if it, I don't know if I, is the general consensus that the- the the wrapping up of the X Files story is satisfactory. I don't, I don't think even it know was, how fans feel about it. Yeah, I don't it. think it was satisfactory because then we came back with like an eleventh season in twenty eighteen or whatever. I mean, see, here's what happened to us. I'm just gonna you and I is that we did that we were into the show and then yes. puberty. <laughs> like, yes, so and then puberty like, happened, and then just so much was going on. We we're just like we can't do this for. Not that maybe there was a sense that it wasn't really cool anymore or like that there was like a um I mean yeah yeah I think it was just like it then it just became about like boys and like hot topic and like you know well life got in the way (laughs) too you just got so much going on that's so funny yeah Yeah, I know it really it might have went to high school timing it's like then we went to high school and was like okay well we we Friday night is about Friday night lights not about X Files anymore, you know. Uh, but yeah, I remember those days. Unsolved mysteries, rescue nine one one. Mysteries. Oh my you know, god! I really, I really. What a time for like. <laughs> but yeah, Chris Carter walked so we could run. So we could run. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yes. When I think about the time too, like it was, it was before the internet had fully exploded. Like I feel like now yeah. people have quick access to everything. Like even when we were talking and you said the Skinwalker Ranch, like I Googled it really fast right. and I pulled it up. But like back then we didn't have oh, that. No, and I no, feel no, like, no. I feel like shows like this really, um, you know, they, they really had more probably opportunities to develop like over more and more episodes sure. because I feel like now people can so quickly debunk things. Yeah. People can so quickly – you know, be like, oh, hey, here's our fan, like, conspiracy theories. Yeah, totally. Throwing them out there. And it's and it's uh, it's interesting to think about how this was, you know, at the beginning of all that or before, before all of yeah, that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just such a, like, snapshot of the times. You know, like, we were all doing landlines. Like, we didn't – like, the fact that she was working on her laptop was, like, a th- – like, she works for the FBI. 
You know, like she she works. Also, <laughs> it's so Doogie Hauser because I forgot that that's like the framework of the show Doogie. moving forward. Is by the end you see her on her giant keyboard, clock 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 clock, <laughs> typing in her assessment. Oh yeah, of the case of his delusion, basically of his delusion because the whole the whole um, premise is that she's there to watch him, yeah, and to keep an eye on him yeah. and. I love that he immediately acknowledges, yeah, I know that you're here to keep an eye on me. Right. And, but he's so confident in his uh, pursuit of the truth yeah. that I, you, you just get the sense that he feels like she's not going to be able to help but be on his side. Right. Eventually. I, yeah. Just the whole show. I mean, it set so many, so many um, precedents. Like, like I'm guessing yes. that David Duchovny was like the first like hot nerd. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's just like. Well, I think we have discussed this before, where I don't get crushes on men who look anything <laughs> like me at all. Like, it's, even to the point where it's like we we look like we could remotely have the same genetic makeup. I, potentially. I understand. I understand what you mean. You know. Yeah. Listen, lanky brunette dudes with like prominent noses. Yeah. Not really <laughs> my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just wonder if it's like if that's like because your parents are like an interracial couple uh, or like hundred percent. You know what I mean? I remember being a little kid and just thinking that like your two families should not look remotely alike. That's, that's really what I remember thinking. Funny. I mean, listen, my mom didn't look that different from my dad. Yeah. You know, she but like she was like a foot shorter. She had black <laughs> she has black hair and They're he was like a foot taller with continents. So I Yeah. <laughs> like I just feel like listen, to each their own but Sure, sure. I I feel like my type that I've always been attracted to is someone who just really looks as if they could not be related to me. I, that, that's yeah. my type. Do you look like we have no ancestors in common? I understand. Th- well, come over here. So this is. <laughs> I I have this joke with Will where I'll like smell him and he'll and I've done this for like a long time and he's like, "What does it smell like?" And I'm like, "Genetic variation." I like it. <laughs> yes, it he's like, smells I like. It. like- Smells like genetic variation. Mm. Smells like we're cleaning out those recessive traits. Get them out of here. So dorky. Let's like, maximize our immunity. Well, like I get it. I'm I'm in your camp. You and I are of the same. Right? Yeah. We, mm-hmm. we even though you and type. I, you and I also probably <laughs> smell like genetic variation to each other. But I, I think we do. <laughs> Um, yeah, but maybe that's why they went with the redhead and the, uh, <laughs> and Julian well, Anderson. Yeah, that's right too, they because, very the, well, I was going to say, I remember seeing, um, these, th- I can't remember the first time I saw her as a blonde mm-hmm, and then they showed mm-hmm. pictures of when she, I think she is naturally a blonde. Maybe. And yeah. then, but that red hair is so iconic, iconic to me yeah and uh so connected to the x-files like i Agreed. can't like if she has that red hair i feel like you can't not see her as scully yeah <laughs> yeah just uh yeah and then she i do you watch um did you watch the crown do you watch the crown i it's present tense i've seen i've seen uh, a couple of the seasons uh so but good. i she's i haven't seen the ones that she's in she's great she's fantastic in everything great actor. honestly yeah Great actor. Sex education, another one we should put oh, in the list. Yes. That's Ooh, been a minute. But you know what? Oh, yes, please. I was going to pop you. this in. Yeah. So shout out to David Clark. Hello. My buddy. Hello, David who, Clark. Hello, David Clark, who uh, told, gave me the best feedback uh, about uh, the podcast and also our first request. Ooh. And it is for Ooh. Allie McBeal, <sighs> which. I mean, yes. we're in that era. I'm, we're talking about, yes. you know, uh, genre bending because that yes. would be, a, I'm, I mean, guys, Dancing Baby. Yes. Yes. Dancing Baby and Smoking Man. Those were two <laughs> 90s uh, uh, images. Yeah. I was like, before memes were memes, whatever we called them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're absolutely right. That was like the, the first dancing. little like gif thing that like kind of, I remember going around the internet, everyone being like, whoa, look at this thing. You yeah. know, like, have you seen the dancing baby? 
I'm so excited. (laughs) Oh my gosh. The singing in the bathroom. (laughs) Okay. For me, for me, what makes Allie McBeal is Lucy Lou because just like, I mean, she's so fabulous, beautiful, strong Asian woman on TV. I was like, give it to me. Who is this woman? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was such a oh my gosh, yeah, what a great cast. Great cast. Ugh. And the well, the the co ed bathroom. Sorry, now we're just getting into yes, it. the co ed bathroom. <laughs> I mean, yeah, here's the thing, guys. We haven't even rewatched the pilot and we're already getting so excited over this. Thank you for the but- recommendation. Thank you. So excited. Such a such a blast from the past that's gonna be. Yeah. But yeah, I mean j- I guess just to sort of circle back and wrap up on on, on X Files, yeah. like I don't even know that we talked that much about the, about show. the I actual know. pilot, but the pilot just—I don't even remember watching the pilot. I just I remember I, just once I got it uh, it on the X Files yes. train, just going. It was well, our Game of Thrones. There was no way like. to go back to the pilot. You know what I mean? No. Like you couldn't just like go to the warehouse or Blockbuster and like pick up the D- the season 1 DVDs like that doesn't that didn't happen like maybe they would show reruns maybe but you'd have to like be diligent about like your t- you have to be on top of your TV guide and just yeah. like that's just not uh-huh. not possible I'm I'm like looking through my notes to make sure I've talked about everything oh one thing is that this ep- the pilot happened like they set all the tone they set like everything without the use of their iconic music so the, this was like <gasps> before. Yes, you're right. Like, it was before. Yeah, you're right because the music really becomes. It took you there. As soon as that that music that that those those opening credits mm-hmm. would kick in, you're just like, <gasps> yeah, <laughs> you're just like you're under your blanket, got your popcorn. It's Friday night, like, <sighs> ooh. Yeah. I, I love this show. It's such this a good was, show. Uh, it's such a good show. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, how did you – I'm like, how did I watch it? Was it on – I'm, I'm trying to remember now. Um, was it on Fox? Yes. It was on Fox. <laughs> yeah. And I think everything um, – let's see. Hold on. What, what, what does X-Files stand for? <laughs> it just means like the un- – <sighs> I think uh, oh, I guess Hulu. it's supposed it's on Hulu. X Files. Is it on Netflix? No, it's on. It's on. What Hulu. does X Files stand for? Good question. Truth and justice. <laughs> I know. I'm like, just kidding. <laughs> so much. Oh my god! Wikipedia says in. A clerk working at the FBI headquarters was responsible for the files. She had originally filed the cases under you for unsolved, oh. but had to move them to a more spacious X cabinet where she ran out of when she ran out of room. They began to be unofficially known as X Files. I Interesting. love that for lore. How great is it that it's like, oh, we ran out of room. Well, yeah. So you just put it in X because there's nothing in X. Yeah. That is so that is so true to government bureaucracy. And just such a genius, like, um, uh, filing move. You know what I mean? Like, yes, girl. Yes. Like, move it on down. I see your organization see you, yeah. skills. But- you know it's not going to get mixed up with the xylophone murders <laughs> of 1973. Right. And then the smoking man at the end of the show takes us to the X-Files, and it is vast, I loved that. It was very much the uh, the Indiana Jones storage locker in Raiders of the Last Ark yes. where they file the Holy Grail. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like because there was this um, silver like um, bull- like if I want to call it like a bullet, but it was like a little silver thing that that was up people's noses who'd been abducted. And oh yes, Jill- and Jillian Scully found that's the one piece of evidence that she found to like corroborate this whole thing. And so she like held on to it, you know, for dear life. And then yes. Smoking Man just like takes it into the file room and there's like 400 of them or something like that. I just, I, I love that by the end of the pilot, you know, aliens are real. Oh yeah. You know that our skeptic Scully has had she she's shaken to her core. Yeah. Like she's- She is. We already know she's the one who's going on a journey. Totally. Mulder doesn't really change. He does throughout the course of the season. No, 
this is Scully's show, honestly, because it starts yes. with her first day, You're right. her entry into it. It's really about her becoming a believer yes. over the course of the season because Mulder doesn't really change his tune. He just gets louder. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's the one who goes on, you know, the change. And I, you know what? I have to say, I also think, I, I think because she was the entry point, I feel like I know a lot of women my age, yeah. around our age, who were so – part of the attraction of the X-Files was like feeling like you were – the entry point was through Scully. Like yeah, I, like a woman in science in the in – the, A woman yeah. in science. Or yes, in power and under, or like – yeah, at all. Yeah. And she was the one with the knowledge. She was the one with the final say. Yeah. She was the one who was like, he's Doogie, crazy, he's not yeah, crazy. Yeah, Doogie it up at the end. <laughs> yes, yes. David Degoovy De Hauser. I'm trying to like combine David Duchovny and Doogie Hauser, guys. You know, I came up with this on the fly. It didn't work. You got to put Doogie Hauser on the map. And I also feel like I drove by a billboard the other day that was like. There's a new Doogie Hauser out, yes, by the way. There's a new Doogie Hauser, and she's a, 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 a woman of color. Like, I mean, yes. a young woman of color. Yeah, which I thought yes. was just great. But we'll have oh, to put I that know. on the list too, because I'd be down. That to one's check going that out. on the list. It's going on the list. Oh, and the one last thing I will say Please. is: Did you did this show make you want to become an FBI agent <laughs> when I was a child? Yes, a thousand. Because I have to say, I, I same, same. <laughs> yeah, I th- yeah. I wanted for a very long time. I wanted to be um, actually not FBI, but I was wanted to be CIA. Um, Ooh, yes. yes. And I even like even when I picked like my international relations major. So even though when I, when I was like nineteen, like old wow. enough to not like <laughs> dream anymore, <laughs> like I just <laughs> still listen. I it. thought it was. I thought it was all about. You know, shoulder pads, yes. aliens, and serial killers. I I was like, this seems like a life I can get on board with. But really, it's more like <laughs> Mayor of Easttown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Um, next week, we will be doing um, – wait, what? Oh, Allie, Allie McBeal. McBeal. Jeez, I just zoned out. Thank you. Yeah, for unless the you know, unless it's like absolutely unstreamable. Oh yeah, I do not believe that's going to be the case. But uh, we are, you know, Allie McBeal is out there, yeah. much like the truth, much like the truth. And we will find her. Yes, read the book Hunt for the Skinwalker. We can talk about that whenever you get around to it on our oh, on our so- I would love on our social. So we can talk about that. I am at Chris Q Chris Q on just IG. <laughs> but find me from there. <laughs> Do not stress her out and try to make her think like she needs to be on more platforms. She's doing fine. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> and um, where are you? I am Timmons? at, I am at Tim and Lisa on just about everything. Yeah. And collectively we are at pilots one one podcast on Instagram, on Twitter. Please follow us wherever you can find us. We love to talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye.